In many games, there are situations where it's possible for the audio to descend into a cacophonous mess. For example, in a multiplayer, you might have 20 characters in a similar area, all running and shooting and shouting, and this may be on top of the game ambient, together with a full orchestral score. This could be a good recipe for audio mud. In order to keep the mix clear, and to allow the player to focus on what's essential, the listener focus options can enable us to create an effect like the equivalent of a zoom lens for our listener. Bookmark 8 brings us to cave 3 of the demonstration level. Now in this dark cave the player needs to search around to find these mushrooms. They're aided by the fact that the mushrooms emit a sound. But when they're all playing at once it can get quite hard to localise that sound. In other words, to tell where it's coming from. So what we've implemented in this cave is a listener focus system. So I'm going to press R. With the focus system on, the sounds that are directly in front of us are louder, and as they pass out of our field of view, they are attenuated or they get quieter. So this allows us to focus just on the mushrooms that are directly in front of us. easy to localize, to find, and pick up. The cave is encompassed by this blueprint listener focus, and here's where our R key press finds all actors of class cave mushroom, and for each of them it calls a function called listener focus, and inside the mushroom blueprint this executes a toggle between two different attenuation assets. So we've got two attenuation variables here containing reference to focus on and focus off, which are then applied to the audio component using the adjust attenuation node. If we open up the focus on attenuation, we can see here that the attenuation listener focus has been enabled. We can understand these settings a little better with the aid of a slide. Let's look at the focus azimuth and non-focus azimuth first. With these settings, you can control the angles that determine whether a sound is classed as being in focus or out of focus. The focus azimuth is illustrated here in green. This is the horizontal angle within which the sound will be classed as being in focus. So an angle of zero degrees is directly in front of the player, and in this case, an angle of 30 in either direction represents this focus azimuth. When the sound is within this range, the focus distance scale, the focus priority scale, and the focus volume attenuation will be applied. Outside of the non-focus azimuth, so outside of this red area, the non-focus distance scale, the non-focus priority scale, and the non-focus volume attenuation will be applied. And between the focus azimuth and the non-focus azimuth is a transition area where the system interpolates between the different settings. So we can see that the focus and non-focus values are used to modify sounds in three ways, distance scaling, volume scaling, and priority scaling. Distance scaling is useful to create a zoom microphone type effect by scaling the apparent distance of sounds that are in and out of focus. For the focus distance scale, a value of less than one would make sounds appear closer when within the focus range, and greater than one would typically be used when out of focus to make sounds feel further away. Volume scaling can be used to add further attenuation to sounds based on their visibility. Usually a sound will have a multiplier of greater than one when within the focus range to make sounds appear louder than usual, and a non-focus volume attenuation of less than one to make them appear quieter when outside of the non-focus azimuth. Priority scaling is used to reduce or enhance the priority of sounds for sound concurrency. So like increasing a sound's volume when focused, you might also want to increase a sound's priority when it's in focus. In other words, use a scaling factor of greater than one. Finally, the interpolation settings are used to smoothly transition between the settings when the sound moves in and out of the focused and non-focused angles. This is an interpolation speed, so smaller values here will result in longer transition times. Going back to the game, I'm just going to turn the enable focus interpolation off and then go to the cave mushroom 
and switch on this little system down here we've put in, which displays the angle between the player character and the mushroom itself. So we can print those numbers to screen. I'll just delete all of the mushroom blueprints apart from one, so again we can hear its effects more clearly. So by default it's got the normal attenuation settings applied. So as I look around you can hear the sound panning, but the volume doesn't change because the distance between the listener, the player, and the mushroom hasn't changed. However, if I now swap the attenuation settings of this object to use a listener focus attenuation, you can see the angle in the top left of the screen. As that changes and goes out of the 15 degree angle of my focus, it's going to start to change towards the non focused attenuation settings. It does that quite suddenly because there's a very small angle of 5 degrees in which to interpolate between the focused and non-focused settings. If we enable interpolation, we get a slightly smoother effect. So in that example, we were not only interpolating between the focus and non-focus settings over this transition angle here, we were also interpolating over time using the focus attack interp speed and focus release interp speed. In this instance, we've shown an example of what might be some kind of detective or special listening mode, but you could also apply a more subtle listener focus setting to all sounds in order to keep the overall mix cleaner. And then you could make exceptions to this for sounds that need to be heard no matter where the player might be looking. In this video, we've looked at the listener focus settings and we've seen how these can be used to help clear up an audio mix so that the player can hear the sounds that are most important to them.